الواحد الحي كذا الملك والملك المالك لا شريك وإنه المجيد والعليم والقادر القدير والحليم وإنه السميع والبصير والأول الآخر والستير الله ربنا هو الإله له من الناس ما اصطفى إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam a story that is circulating uh, in social media and uh, in the internet, it's not from the Sunnah, it's just a story that people cite. It's very interesting and I chose to begin the khutbah with it today. Probably some of you came across it already. There was that king who used to have a minister. For one day the king got injured and one of his fingers was cut. For when the minister saw this, he commented by saying, Khair, insha'Allah. It's good, insha'Allah. That comment, the statement of the minister, upset the king so much that he actually rebuked him and he said to him you know what guards take him to jail for as the guards are coming to arrest him and chain him and take him to jail so the minister said khair insha'Allah it's good insha'Allah in my arrest there is good insha'Allah and they took him to jail. It was the habit of the king. Every week he would go to the jungle or to the desert by himself. And of course he would have his minister with him. Just both of them. For subhanallah this time he changed his direction and he ended up in a jungle. And he was arrested by people living in the forest, in the jungle. And those people used to worship an idol, a sanam. And he coincided with the day that they are supposed to offer a human qurbani to that idol. And that's why, ya ikhwa, the aqidat al-salb, the, 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 the belief of, of crucifixion, uh, Paul actually, we believe, he inserted it from al wathaniyah from idol worshippers, because it's coming from al wathaniyah they arrested the king and they said you know what you're going to be the qurbani for our idol but when they saw one of his fingers is missing 
He said, dare us we offer a qurbani like this to our idol. It's not befitting our idol that we offer a human with one finger missing. Just let go. Get out of here. We can't offer you as a qurbani. You don't qualify. For as the king is returning, he's reflecting upon the statement the minister made that khayr, insha'Allah, he now understood that in the cutting of that finger, there is something that is good. He saw it. As soon as he arrived to his palace, he immediately requested the release of the minister. For when he appeared before him, he asked him, listen, now I understand the khayr, the good in me losing that finger. It actually spared my life. But where is the khayr, the good in you being arrested and placed in jail? He said, would I have been free? I would have accompanied you in that journey. And I would have been the qurbani that they would have offered to their idol. Subhanallah, ya uh, This is what you call, you know, when you reach that state of mind, you indeed enter Jannah in this, ver in this earth. You enter the Jannah. Uh, the scholars, they say, Inna fi dunya la Jannah. Inna fi dunya la Jannah. Indeed, in this world, there is a Jannah. Whoever does not enter the Jannah, he will not enter the next Jannah. Well, then, like some of the scholars, when they explain that verse in Surah Ar-Rahman, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ Whoever fears the position of standing in front of Allah in the day of resurrection, he will have Jannatan. One of the ways to explain it, Jannatul Dunya wa Jannatul Akhirah. Now Jannatul Dunya, Rahatul Bal, peace of mind. That whatever you're going through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained it upon you. It's written. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew it, wrote it, willed it to happen, created you to make it happen actually. Oh, this is where you attain the sweetness of Iman. Fi Sunan Abi Dawood, Kitab al Sunnah, Babu al Qadr. Al Walid, the son of Ubad ibn Samit, radiallahu anhu. He was traveling and he heard that his father is passing away. The news got to him that his father is going through his final illness. He immediately marched back to Medina to see his father before his death. He entered and he found his father laying down. After he said, Assalamu alaykum ya abati, Assalamu alaykum ya abati, please, Father, awsini. I came rushing to hear your final wasiyah. Tell me something that I can hang on. Ubad ibn Samit is a companion, ya ikhwa. Umin ruwati al hadith. See, in spite of his conditions, he asked the people surrounding him. Help me sit down. So he sat and he looked at his son and he said to him, Ya Bunay, my son, innaka lan tudrik ta'mal iman. You will never be able to attain the taste of faith. Hatta tu'min, unless or until you believe with certainty, without any shadow of doubt, that whatever inflicted you was not to miss you, and whatever missed you was not to reach you. Well, Sahabi, they teach us something, the companions always, when they say a statement like this, 
They immediately, they say, listen, I deduced this, I derived this from something I heard from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa I didn't make this up. Look, his wasiyah is not over yet. فَإِنِّي سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ I have heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّ أَوَّلَ مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ الْقَلَمْ The first thing which Allah created was a writing instrument, which we call the pen, القلم, the pen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the pen, اُكْتُبْ, write. The pen said, write what, O Allah? Write the destiny of every, all creation, of every created being until the establishment of the hour. اُكْتُبْ مَا هُوَ كَائِنْ حَتَّى قِيَامَ السَّاعِ حَتَّى تَقُومَ السَّاعِ My son, if you die not believing in this, I disown you. أنا بريء منك. You have to die on that belief. يا إخوة, you will never be able to attain that peace of mind. You will never be able to attain that Jannah in earth without believing in the sixth pillar of faith. الإيمان بالقدر خيره وشره That you believe in the divine destiny, the predestination. It is good and what you perceive to be bad. That's how we explain شره. لا ننسب الشر إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى. And actually having doubt about this is dangerous. في مسند الإمام أحمد A predecessor whose name is Ibn al-Daylami وعالم من علماء الأمة He came to Ubay ibn Ka'b رضي الله عنه The companion فقال له يا Ubay يا Ubay In my nafs in my chest there is some doubt about Al-Qadr. Please talk to me. Help me. Hadithni bi shay'in la'alla Allah yudhibu. Narrate to me something. It may be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help me remove it out of my chest. Ubay radiyallahu anhu says to him, listen to this. لو أنفقت مثل أحد ذهب، if you spend gold the size of أحد the mountain of أحد in the cause of Allah، imagine a lot of us sometimes we spend but in the cause of Allah is really bending، but you're sure it's in the cause of Allah، imagine the amount of gold you spend in the cause of Allah. لن يقبله لن يقبله الله منك. Allah سبحانه وتعالى will not accept it from you. Will not accept that صدقة from you. حتى تؤمن unless or until you believe. And he repeated the same statement. أن ما أصابك لم يكن ليخطئك وأن ما أخطأك لم يكن ليصيبك. That whatever inflicted you was not to miss you. And whatever missed you was not to even get near you, to reach you. هذا هو يا إخوة. Brothers and sisters in Islam, علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه said about the subject of القدر, سر الله في خلقه is the secret of Allah in His creation. No one dare would have. A full understanding of this subject. You can't. It's a secret. But for one to understand and believe in that sixth article of faith, there are four basic principles that you must firmly believe pertaining to the subject of Al Qadr. The first element, the scholars, they call them maratib al-qadr, the levels of al-qadr. The first aspect, principle, level, whatever word you want to use here, is 
you must believe in the completeness and the absoluteness of Allah's knowledge. This is number one, ilm. Inna Allah alima ma kan, wa ma huwa kain, wa ma sayakun, wa ma lam yakun law kana kayfa kana yakun. Shuf hadha? Allah knows what happened in the past. He knows what is happening now. And he knows what will happen in the future. Even the hypothetical, he knows it. What if? He knows it. والعلم هذا إخوة مهم جدا because uh, the first sect in Islam that emerged called المعتزلة the people who place intellect ahead of revelation they worship the brain uh, too much they, they end up glorifying and, and magnifying the human intellect they basically say that Allah knows what happened in the past but the future no يقول لك كده ودول اوائل المعتزله تو بي فير لان اواخر المعتزله المعتزله المتاخرين دي كانت ايفن ميك ذات ستيتمنت اند ذات از واي الامام الشافعي رحمه الله سيز وات اف سمبادي سيز ذس ما هو ذس از يو نو حديث جبريل ان ان جبريل كامينج ان هيومن فورم Just go home and look at the beginning of this hadith. This hadith was triggered actually because of this subject, Al-Qadr. That the people in Al-Basra, they say what? In unasun fi al-Basra yaquluna anna al-amra unuf. Things happen randomly and Allah gets to know about them after they happen. See this. Wadharak al-Shafi'i says what? Khasimuhum bil-ilm. challenge them with the attribute of knowledge فإن أقروا فقد خصموا وإن أنكروا فقد كفروا وده تكفير مطلق مش معين don't point fingers عشان نكون واضحين ما تقولوش الشيخ تكفير ومش عارف ايه uh. again some of you may not grasp what I'm trying to say if somebody tells you that Allah basically doesn't have qadr there is no qadr things do not happen according to the predestination of Allah ask them this question did Allah know about it if they say no they got in trouble because sifatul ilm thabita fil quran the attribute of knowledge is established huwa al ali allam al ghuyub alim al ghayb wa al shahada inna allah la yaghfa alayhi shay'un fil ardi wa la fis sama وعنده علم وعنده مفاتح الغيب لا يعلمها الا هو what are you going to do with all this Quran you're belying the Quran the Quran says that Allah knows everything so you're belying the Quran then you go out of the fold of Islam but if they say Allah knows about it then خلاص it's over there is قدر لان الخلق the creation and the knowledge are connected to one another so the first brothers and sisters in Islam is knowledge the second Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala committed that knowledge into writing. And Allah doesn't need to do this because لا يضل ربي ولا ينسى Allah doesn't forget but to become an evidence against us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote that knowledge in what is known to be the preserved tablet اللوح المحفوظ When was this writing? Imagine this. إن الله كتب مقادير الخلائق هذه عبد الله بن عمرو بن العاص رضي الله عنهما في صلي إمام مسلم الله سبحانه وتعالى رود the proportions of all what he created when بخمسين ألف سنة قبل أن يخلق السماوات والأرض وكان عرشه على الماء fifty thousand years before he created the heavens and the earth and his throne was in water imagine this ولذلك يقول لك وفي السماء رزقكم The paycheck that you get is في السماء يعني في السماء ما هو مكتوب في اللوح المحفوظ It's already written there Don't panic Don't bother الكتابة And those two levels يا إخوة was mentioned in one verse in the Quran in سورة الحج الله سبحانه وتعالى says ألم تعلم أن الله يعلم ما في السماء والأرض Don't you know that Allah knows what's in the heavens and what's in the earth? That's the first level. The second level. 
ان ذلك في كتاب indeed this was recorded in a book three ان ذلك على الله يسير i'm sorry those are the two the third level المشيئه the will الاراده that allah wills for it to happen يا إخوة الإمام أحمد was asked what is القدر you know what he said it's a very interesting definition he said القدر قدرة الله القدر is the power of Allah the mighty power of Allah I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give an example now a human example which is connected to Allah. That's why we have to say, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى To Allah belongs the best example in the heavens and the earth. Let's take an example, this building. For it to come to existence, what happened? You got an engineer, you got a piece of land, you go to the engineer, listen, can you please, I need to put that facility together. So he ends up with thoughts, thoughts. Ideas, knowledge, the swimming pool there, the musalla here. It was written that the musalla is going to be here. And this one too, inshallah, coming soon, inshallah. Inshallah, I said, inshallah. And after he thinks about it, what does he do? He commits that knowledge to what? To diagrams. He makes drawing, right? That's the writing. That's knowledge, then the writing. Then what do you need? You need money. You need labor. You need manpower to bring this into existence. <laughs> That's why sometimes we go into partnership with people. But Allah, Allah has the Mashiach, the power to bring it into existence. Not only this, look at the fourth stage of Al Qadr. He creates you and me to execute. What he knew, what he wrote, and what he will to happen. Khalq. If you nourish yourself with these four elements, brothers and sisters in Islam, al-ilm, the knowledge, the recording, the writing, mashiatullah, that everything happens because Allah wills it to happen. And nothing happens without Allah's will. And number four, He creates you to make it happen. And He creates the creation. Not actually the creation. He creates what we do. You see that kalam that I'm doing? That kalam right now, Allah created it. Allah created my kalam. You see that move? Allah created it. You believe that? Yeah, you have a will, you have irada yourself. You do have irada out there. You do have mashia yourself. But your will is under Allah's will. Unless Allah's will, your will is not going to come into existence. Here is what I want you to go home with. All of the above with just a little warm up. And memorize this line. They say, أصل عقيدة التوحيد أن يربط العبد عمله بمشيئة الله في الماضي والحاضر والمستقبل. You know our salvation lays in توحيد monotheism. The foundation of توحيد that you connect what you do to Allah's will. In the past, in the present, in the future. In the past, something wrong happened. What are you going to do? Uh, that's one of the things. You know, a lot of us, we dwell in the past. Man, this, I got... Uh, the psychotherapists in, in the world are really living on this, you know. Well, they live in the past and the future. Look what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells you. But before we go to the hadith in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let me tell you that the essence of believing in Al-Qadr is actually to comfort you regarding 
bad things that happened to you in the past. And this is what the minister believed in. And this is what Ubad ibn Samit said to his son. And this is what Ubay ibn Ka'b and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and Zayd ibn Thabit and Hudayfa ibn Yaman said to Ibn Daylami that everything happened because Allah willed it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِّن قَبْلِ أَن نَبْرَأَهَا إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٍ Whatever calamity befalls you, Allah knew about it, Allah wrote it, Allah willed it to happen. طيب, what this is going to help you with? Look at the next verse. لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ So you don't grieve over what you missed. Now, what should you say? في صحيح مسلم حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم says المؤمن القوي خير وأحب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف وفي كل خير احرص على ما ينفعك واستعن بالله ولا تعجزا Here is what I'm looking for وإذا أصابك شيء When something bad happens to you That you consider to be bad what should you say? فَقُلْ Say قَدَّرَ اللَّهِ وَمَا شَاءَ فَعَلْ Allah has ordained this upon me and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained came to pass came to happen قدر الله What are you going to do? Uh, this is the big problem يا إخوة that we try to Look at the end of the hadith. Don't say, وَلَا تَقُلْ لَوْ أَنِّي فَعَلْتُ كَذَا وَكَذَا مَا أُصِبْتُ بِكَذَا وَكَذَا Would I have done this or this? I would not have done this or inflected with this. Look at it. فَإِنَّ لَوْ تَفْتَحُ عَمَلَ الشَّيْطَانِ That word لَوْ which is if I have opens the gate of shaitan that can lead you to disbelieve in al-qadr you're not in control brothers allah willed for you to go through this accept it say qaddar allah wa ma sha'a fa'al over what you experienced in the past because there is nothing you can do about it it's like people crying over milk that spilled already got spilled already what are you going to do you can change the past. They can just move on, move on with this. By the way, you could say "low" in the future. You could say "low" if in the future. You could say "if." Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in Hadith Abi Huraira in the Bukhari, "Low la an ashuk ala ummati la martahum bi siwak and the kulli salah." Having been that I am afraid that it would be heavy or hard on my ummah, I would have asked them to use the siwak every salah. لو لا حداثة قومك بالإسلام لا هدمت الكعبة ولا عدت بناءها على القواعد إبراهيم. حديث عائشة عند البخاري أيضا. Has it been for Quraysh just accepted Islam? I would have rebuilt the Kaaba and and included that hijr ismail so rasulullah is talking about the future so you could say in low low in the future you could say in the future but in the past no but here is a very technical issue here we only say qaddar allah wa ma sha'a fa'al pertaining to masaib afflictions calamities but what about sins can you use the qadr as a reason for sinning? You go to a Muslim who is committing adultery. Someone who is engaged in usury. Ya haram alaykum. Qadr ya shaykh. Qadr Allah. I'm sorry. You can do that. Oh, in the time of Umar, at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, a man stole. He's about to establish the had on him. Uh, you know what the had is? Huh? So his mother said, uh, I'm sorry, the, the man said to Umar ibn Khattab, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, 
O commander of the faithful. Innama saraktu bi qadar Allah. I stole because of the qadar of Allah, the predestination of Allah. Umar said to him, and I'm going to cut your hand according to the predestination of Allah. وأنا أقطع بقدر الله ما حنلعب على بعض بقى حن لا لا وهذا يا إخوة مذهب الجبرية like I, I, I talked about the القدرية المعتزلة look at the other extreme الجبرية what is الجبرية we call them the fatalist they say everything يعني I won't do that you go and slap somebody in his face it's haram even to slap on the face what are you doing this brother قدر يا brother قدر 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 ايه؟ لا لا لا. وجس هو ستارت ذس 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 سكت. يو نو هو از ذا هيد اوف ذس سكت؟ ابليس سيتن. وات ديد هي سي تو الله وين هي ريفيوز تو باو داون تو ادم؟ قال بما اغويتني. اهو جبري هذا. اول جبري كان ابليس. فاتلس يقول لك بيكوز يو مس جايدد مي. سو الله مس جايدد هيم. لا يو هاد ا تشويس. فالاحتجاج بالقدر using the قدر to justify shortcomings to justify sins to justify doing haram is awful and guess what who started this المشركين what did they say in the Quran pay attention to this وقال الذين أشركوا لو شاء الله ما أشركنا ولا آباؤنا ولا حرمنا من شيء حبيبي شوف شوف دوسو كوميت شرك دي سي وات إف الله ويلز وي ود نوت هاف بين مشركس بوليثيست نور ود هاف دان ذا حرام احتجاج بالقدر أهو كذلك قال ال... كذلك كذب الذين من قبلهم حتى ذاقوا بأسنا. They are following the footsteps of Satan and the followers of Satan. Look 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 at the question here. Anybody who uses the qadr to justify his sin ask him this question. Look at the question. قل say هل عندكم من علم فتخرجوه لنا. Do you have access to Allah's knowledge? Here is the point. He is committing the sin because he believes that Allah knew it, wrote it, and that's why he's doing it. Then you ask him the question, do you have access to Allah's knowledge? What is he going to say to you? Neen. Do you have access? Do you know what Allah wrote in the preserved tablet? And you know what Allah wrote in the preserved tablet? Anybody who uses the qadr to justify his sin, tell him this. Attala al-ghayba am ittakhada inda al-rahman ya'ahda. Do you have access to the preserved tablet? Ya salam. The shuf baga ee. But stretch your mind with me for a minute here. Huwa yahtajju bi majhul wa yatruk al-ma'loom. That Allah sent you a messenger to tell you that stealing is haram, usury is haram, fornication is haram, shirk is haram. So this is what is known to you according to the messenger. So you leave what is known and you justify it according to what you don't know. يترك ال 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 المعلوم الرسالة التي أتته من عند الله the message which came to him from Allah to explain to him what is halal and what is haram. And he justifies it using what? What he doesn't know. Uh, when you debate with, with people like those, they would strike you with this hadith. A famous hadith is Sunnah. He will be like, Tab baga ya amm, inta amm in nasih. Inta amm li nasih wa fahim baga ee. Really you understand. Tab kam. What do you say about hadith Adam and Musa? Fi sa'i al-Bukhari. Hadith Abi Huraira. What is Hadith Adam and Musa? The night of the Mi'raj, Musa met Adam. So Musa ran away. He said, "Aunt Adam, Abu al-Bashar, your Adam, our father, ya Rajil, you got us into this. All of what we are in right now because of you eating from the tree." يعني has it been for you eating from the tree? Would have been fil jannah and khalas wal mawdi' khilsat. Then look at him, alayhi salam, says to Musa alayhi salatu salam, look, أأنت موسى? You are Musa. 
الذي اصطفاك الله برسالاتي وبكلامي الله تشوز هيم وذ هيز سبيتش وذ هيز كلام didn't you read that was this was written upon me before we were created it was already written Allah knew about it and wrote it فالجبر ذا فتلس والكم اهو ادم اهو look at the end of the hadith the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said فحج ادم موسى فحج ادم موسى فحج ادم موسى that the hujjah the argument of adam was superior to the point musa made يعني ادم won the debate فهاو دو يو جاستيفاي ذس اقول لك تعالى لا 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 ليسن ادم ريبنتد فروم ذا سن يو كان دو ذس فروم ا سن يو ريبنتد فروم بات يو كانوت يوز ذا قدر تو جاستيفاي دويلينج ان ا سن اور كوميتينج ا سن you're getting it yeah i understand this is a little bit theology but we don't see you but in jumas we have muhadarat mashallah alaykum al dunya shaghla al nas fa we have to teach hada this subject fa it's important to understand that yes like for example somebody who used to sin walhamdulillah rabbina tab'a li mashallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him to repent والله الحمد لله ربنا اكرمني اي يوز تو بي تور جايد يعني انا يوز تو دو ذس اند ذس بس الحمد لله والله الله هاز بليس يو كود دو ذس بات يور نوت جاستيفاينج يور اكشلي ريجريتينج ذا فاكت ذات يو يوز تو دو وات تو دو فادم از تيلينج موسى عليه السلام اي ريبنتد فروم ذا سن اي ريبنتد فروم ذا سن براذرز اند سيسترز ان اسلام ريلي saying that i'm sinning because allah wrote it upon you you're accusing allah's justice or you're doubting allah's justice how in the world allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to punish you for something that he forced you to do you have a will you chose add to this it goes against the fitrah it goes against the billahi alik if i come to attack you what are you going to fitrah Inclination, inclination, you're gonna try to at least do like this. Tab stand and say qadr. Can you stand and say qadr? I'm gonna stand and say qadr. You're not gonna do it. Fitra. I'm gonna run away. So this is in the past. What about the present, ya ikhwah? The present. Shuf, shuf. You, you enter into your house. Huh? And you see your family. Healthy. The kids are behaving. Bisallu. Wealthy. Huh? What should you say? What you have is because of you? لا, because of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, وَلَوْلَا إِذَّ خَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ قُلْتَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا قُلْتَ A lot of us do this, by the way. وَلَكِ يَقُلْ لَكِ We could envy what we have. This is a protection from envy. You could envy your own self, your own family, by not saying that. So when you see, ما شاء الله. شوف اللوك at the kids يا أخي. العيال إيه؟ العيال شطار. Look at the the kids are so. يا رجل قول ما شاء الله ما شاء الله ده يقولك it's sick you could envy your own children ولولا إذ دخلت جن because nothing happens without the will of Allah حتى عمل الصالح even goodness you see يا إخوة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم told us what when you hear the مؤذن الله أكبر الله أكبر what should you say الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إل أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد أشهد أن محمد رسول الله طب حي على الصلاة What do you say? What does it mean حي على الصلاة first? Come on, leave the Broncos game and come to pray. Come on, leave the soccer game and come to pray. Leave work and go to play, to pray. Huh? You're supposed to say what? You're supposed to say what? لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله I will be unable to do this without Allah is what? Allah is will, Allah is might, Allah is power. إن أريد إلا الإصلاح ما استطعت وما توفيقي إلا وهذا يا أخوة بدي أقول لك this is when you connect yourself with Allah سبحانه وتعالى all the time that's when you feel at peace at peace what about the future أو لا ولا تقولن لشيء إني فاعل ذلك غدا إلا أن يشاء الله don't you dare say to something that you will do tomorrow يعني هذه الآية لها سبب نزول. This verse had 
a reason for its revelation. When the disbelievers in Mecca, Athar ibn Abbas, saw that the message of the Prophet ﷺ is invading, penetrating hearts. They've been fighting the Prophet all along and is not stopping. They said, you know what? The, the, the people who can help us against Rasulullah sallallahu let's go to the, the Jews in Medina. Because you need to understand that the people of Quraysh, the last messenger they received was Ismail. Ibrahim bin Ismail. After that, Mafish. But they said, Fiahal Kitab fil fil Medina, they are aware of this. But they send the Walid ibn al-Mughira, I believe, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt, delegation of three individuals. So they went to the Jews in Medina, the scholars of the Torah. Listen, we have this man in our town claiming to be a prophet. We can't stop him, man. Can you help us out? <laughs> Look what they said. Is'aluhu an thalaf. Ask him about three things. If he answers you, then he's a messenger. And if he doesn't answer, then you know what to do. Look at the type of questions they ask. Is'aluhu an fityatin kanu fi al-dahri al-awwal, fi al-zaman al-awwal, lahum amrun ajeeb. Ask him about a group of youth who had a very fascinating story. They mean Ashab al-Kahf. And ask him about a man who traveled earth. وَاسْأَلُوهُ عَنْ رَجُلٍ طَوَّافٍ يَقْصِدُنْ دُلْ قَرْنَيْنِ And ask him about the ruh, the spirit, the soul. For look at this, in spite of the situation, the disbelievers came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, listen, Answer these three questions right now. About that group of youth, about the man who traveled earth, and tell us about the ruh. You know what the Prophet ﷺ said to them? I will answer you tomorrow. Without what? Without inshallah. Ya ikhwa, you need to understand this. Wallahi, inshallah, this word that we mess around with, we play with, deep theology. Deep theology, insha'Allah, Hadi, that we play around with. This is, <laughs> insha'Allah, I will see you tomorrow. Uh, 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 brother, I will see you tomorrow. Insha'Allah, ya amma, I, please, I want to see you tomorrow. <laughs> that means if he said insha'Allah, that is not going to show up. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach the ummah through the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jibreel was suspended from coming down. He said, I will tell you tomorrow. Jibreel did not come down. Even though the urge, the emergency here, the whole deen is challenged. But Allah is teaching us through the messenger. Sometimes eh, you want to convey a message to somebody that you don't want to speak directly to. Then, by the way, don't do this. But you're talking to the person next to him. Huh. Look, Jibreel did not come. And when he comes down, he comes down with this verse. وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ Before we answer the three questions, I'm going to answer the questions for you. But don't you dare say to something that you will do tomorrow without insha'Allah. وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدَى إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ Always, insha'Allah. ستجدني إن شاء الله صابرة ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصابرين إن شاء الله حتى إخوة very interesting one of the scholars was asked this question just to show you that إن شاء الله can help you in some situations that his wife got somebody asked the sheikh this question that his wife he was asleep taking a nap so his wife brought a knife and put it on his neck and she said to him, divorce me right now. Uh, what are you going to do, brothers? <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Imagine. This happened, actually. Imagine. Yeah, this, oh, we're living in a very interesting time. Allah al Allahumma Allah al-Musta'am. Imagine. The sheikh, actually, you could run away from this situation saying, insha'Allah. You are divorced, insha'Allah. But with two conditions. That you have the intention to say insha'Allah before you utter it and you do it at the same time. You cannot wait. You are divorced and then you wait 10 minutes and come back say insha'Allah. 
لا it has to be at the same time with already an intention formulated before uttering إن شاء الله أه هو عندنا قصة يا إخوة يعني نختم بها إن شاء الله جحا a comic Arabic character يعني he wanted to go and buy a donkey فا he got really dressed and he's walking out of town فا the people ask him where are you going يا جحا he said I'm going to go buy a donkey from the market But the people said to him, say insha'Allah. Tabgul insha'Allah. He said, why should I say insha'Allah? The donkeys are in the market and the money is in my bucket. Why do I need insha'Allah for? So as soon as he walked into the market, somebody took his wallet away, stole his wallet. Money is gone. So he's coming back to town. Ya jurru adhyal al-hazim. Coming back, looking down. Juha, what happened? What happened? Where is the donkey? He said, my money got stolen, insha'Allah. I said, insha'Allah. Everything insha'Allah, ya ikhwallah. Shuf al-shafi'i yanshud wa yaqul, ma shi'ta kana wa illam asha' wa ma shi'tu illam tasha' la yaqul. Shuf al-kalam hadha. Whatever you will, O Allah, will happen, even if I don't want it. And whatever I will, me, will not happen unless you will it. Imagine, هَذَا هُوَ أَصْلُ التَّوْحِيدِ This is the foundation of Tawheed. In the past, you say, قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ وَمَا شَاءَ فَعَلْ In the present, you say, مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهُ In the future, you say, إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ Then you have practiced the foundation of Tawheed. أقول قولي هذا وأصدق الله لي ولكم. الواحد الحي كذا الملك والملك المالك لا شريك والصمد السيد والمبين والأحد العظيم والمتين وإنه الحق العلي الأعلى المتعال الوتر قد تجلى الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا الملك والملك المالك لا شريك وإنه المجيد والعليم والقادر القدير والحليم وإنه السميع والبصير والأول الآخر والستير الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك والظاهر الباطن والكبير والوارث الرقيب والنصير سبحانه البارئ والمصور والقابض الباسط والمسعر الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا الملك والملك المالك لا شريك الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك والصمد السيد والمبين والأحد العظيم والمتين وإنه الحق 
الرب العلي الأعلى المتعالي الوتر قد تجلى الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك وإنه المجيد والعليم والقادر القدير والحليم وإنه السميع والبصير والأول الآخر والستير الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك والظاهر الباطن والكبير والوارث الرقيب والنصير سبحانه البارئ والمصور والقابض الباسط والمسعر الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك والصمد السيد والمبين والأحد العظيم والمتين وإنه الحق العلي الأعلى المتعالي الوتر قد تجلى الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك وإنه المجيد والعليم والقادر القدير والحليم وإنه السميع والبصير والأول الآخر والستير الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك والظاهر الباطن والكبير والوارث الرقيب والنصير سبحانه البارئ والمصور والقابض الباسط والمسعر الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء ما اصطفاه 
الواحد الحي كذا المليك والملك المالك لا شريك